Rapid Miner up and running now, so let's uh, take a look at it and see what it does. The first thing you'll notice is you've got your main workspace here. This is where we would build processes by dragging in operators, performing activities on them. We can drag in data and other objects that we put together in our repository. So let's get to those in just a minute. Down here, we've got uh, a data editor where we can take a look at some data. We also have some recommended activities that we can perform. Rapid Miner uses something called uh, the Wisdom of the Crowds, where they collect information from all Rapid Miner users and see, well, based on where you are right now, here's what most people do. Over here, you can see we've got a parameters panel that displays parameters right now. It's just parameters about my general process. So let's say I wanted to retrieve some data. Once I've got the retrieve data operator in here, it says, well, where do you want to get that data from? And in this case, this retrieve assumes I'm going to be using something that's in my repository. Again, we'll get to the repository in just a minute. All right, so I've got the parameters panel. And then down here, I've got a little help panel. I can close these panels. I can add additional panels by uh, selecting the view menu option up here. And you can see there are a lot of different panels I can bring in and uh, resize. I can drag them all over, resize them, whatever I'd like to do. And then if I have rearranged my view and put different panels in, taken some out, I can always go back and restore the default. All right, so we've got that. Let's uh, take a look at the repository now. The repository is a nice way to organize what you're working on in RapidMiner. So you'll see it comes with some samples. I've got some sample data. And these padlocks mean that data is locked. These um, are data sets that are available somewhere up in the cloud, and I can grab those and use those while I'm working with RapidMiner. But I also have a local repository here that's on my local computer. So you can see here the training resources. Uh, the training resources are pretty nice as well. You might want to explore those in your repository. All of these will come with your installation, the training resources, the community samples, and the basic samples. And then you can create whatever other repositories you would like. So I can click here and say create a repository. I've already got my local repository, but let's say I wanted to create a, uh, another local repository. So I'll call this uh, local repository MRW2 since I have MRW1 out there. Use the default location. So here's the default where my repositories are when I run RapidMiner. So I can actually find that information out there in my Windows file structure. All right. Now, once I've got my repository set up, by default, I have an area to create some connections here. I don't have any connections set up yet in this, but I can also create additional subfolders. So I may want to create a subfolder here to store different data sources. So I've got data sources, and then I might have, have a subfolder for different processes that I build. And then I might want another folder called models. As I build uh, models that I like, I might want to save some. And anything else I want to do, I could save uh, data prep conversions that I have created and store those in here and reuse them some other time. So in general, this is a good way to get yourself started. I'm going to go ahead and delete this repository because I already have one set up the way I like. But when you're working with Rapid Miner, you can set up your own repository. So the next thing you'd want to do is probably get some data into your repository. 
and you see it's fairly straightforward import data. I'm going to go out and find it on my computer. The first thing RapidMiner asks is, well, where is your data? It's in my computer. I've got it in my downloads folder, so I'm just going to go up until I get to my downloads, desktop, downloads. And I've got an insurance data file here that I'd like to work with. There it is. And as I work my way through importing the data, I can preview what I've got each step along the way. Yes, I do have a header row. The first row of data is the header. If I turn that off, you can see it would just include it as another row of data. It makes pretty good guesses along the way, so no problems. Everything looks okay. It's a CSV file structure. Here, you can see how it's breaking down each field. I go to Next. It's telling me the data type it's giving me for each field. So age is an editor. Sex is a polynomial. That's uh, RapidMiner's terminology for a polynomial. Now, this is an interesting one because uh, it's worth exploring these carefully. If we know we only have two data types here, I'm going to change this from a polynomial to a binomial or a binomial because machine learning tools are going to give me additional capabilities and better visualization capabilities when I have a binomial attribute versus a polynomial attribute with more than two values. All right, BMI, we've got set up as a real number. Children is an integer. Smoker, again, is one of those that's a yes, no. So it is actually a binomial. Region is a polynomial because we have four different regions. And then we've got the real uh, for charges. So real is a numeric field, a real number, or charges is a real numeric field, which means it's a floating decimal point number. All right, let's see what else we've got there. Okay, so that's good. I could at this point in time even say, well, which one of these is my label? Which one of these is some kind of an identifier, etc.? But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is, cancel that. And so far, everything looks good. I click Next. And then the last thing is I say, well, I would like to put this in my local repository. I already have a folder set up called Data. So I'm going to drop this into my Data folder, click Finish. And now, not only is it in my folder, I can now review it. I, I see the results of what I've done. Here is my data set. I can take a look at basic statistics on each of my features. You can see age and sex have a little warning sign. This is something that has popped up in recent years and a lot of machine learning tools to warn you that just based on the name of that particular feature, this could be something that you have to uh, concern yourself with as far as fairness, um, discrimination, making sure that you are not violating any kind of uh, ethical issues with this particular data field. All right. And then I can start building visualizations with various columns and values to um, visualize the data and just explore it a little bit right here within the tool. So right now it's looking uh, against BMI. Uh, let's say I wanted BMI against age. All right, so there I get a view there. Uh, how about age against, and this uh, uh, has gender or sex as the color. Well, what if I want uh, age versus uh, charges, okay? So here we can see various illustrations that show me how my variables plot against each other, in this case on a uh, scatter diagram. All right.
So that is it for getting data into your repository. And you can see I already have a bunch of other data files in here. So this um, insurance that I just imported. Okay, so we brought an item into our repository. The next thing we might want to do is just double check and see what extensions we have installed. So if I go to the marketplace, I can look and see what's available. I highly recommend installing the operator to toolbox. That has uh, become so common, most people consider it uh, more or less part of the core product. And then you can also, so this one lists, this tab lists the most commonly downloaded ones. You can also see the most highly rated extensions. All right, so the text processing is a, a good one to uh, consider. So I will go ahead and download and install those. And you can see it's a fairly smooth process. I'll accept the terms of all the license agreements for these that I want to install. And then RapidMiner goes about downloading them, installing them in the right folder. And then it will prompt me to restart RapidMiner in order to use these newly installed extensions. Once I do that, RapidMiner starts back up. And I'm ready to go. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Let's get back and uh, see what we'd like to do next.